Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we will be looking at The Song of the Shirt by Thomas Hood. This is a very long poem, so for the sake of my sanity, I've broken down the poem into two parts and made two videos on it. In the first part, I'll analyze the title and the first four stanzas of the poem. In the second part, I'll analyze the remaining stanzas and share a few observations accompanied by theories. I'll be pointing out details and leaving hints in a lot of places instead of constructing proper analysis on different lines, phrases, themes, etc. So instead of doing 80% of the work, I'll do 60% this time. But this 60% will create the perfect foundation for you to construct your thoughts and ideas upon. So don't go on having a heart attack, okay? The name of the poem is Song of the Shirt. And if you've read the poem, you know a woman is singing the song. Yet the song is not called Song of the Woman, highlighting the lack of importance given to her and the undeniable importance given to the shirt. Since you are told this is a song, you will probably expect it to be a jovial one. Why would there be a depressing song about a shirt? Let's start the stanza by stanza analysis. With fingers weary and worn, the alliterative W instantly makes the tone dismal. The adjective worn is generally attributed to clothes, but over here it describes the laborer's fingers, giving a sense that the woman is part of the cloth rather than an individual human being, highlighting the lack of humanistic elements in laborers seen with the passage of time. With eyelids heavy and red. From heavy, we may assume the woman is sleepy, and with red, we may assume she has been sleepy for a while. The basic human necessity of sleep is not being catered. Instead, she might also be rubbing her eyes to get rid of the sleepiness going against nature. A woman sat in unwomanly rags. The persona further talks about her appearance and creates an ironical contrast through this line, making the reader realize that the woman is being deprived the right of living life like the privileged, plying her needle and thread, stitch, stitch, stitch. The repetition of stitch accompanied by the exclamation marks may represent the sound of the stitching machine that never stops. The sound is harsh and fierce, echoing the brutal lives of the laborers exemplified through the list of three that follow. In poverty, hunger, and dirt. And still with a voice of Dolores Pitch, she sang the song of the shirt. We see that the woman sings song of the shirt, not the song of the women or something like that, showing this piece of fabric has gained more importance than the woman herself. This misfortune is emphasized upon by the adjective Dolores used to describe her voice. Work, work, work. The repetition of work with pauses indicated by the dashes makes the tone sound not only tiresome but loathsome as well since this line is repeated multiple times in the poem. Till the brain begins to swim. The way this line is enveloped between work, work, work not only creates a sense of bitterness, but we can see that the woman cannot think of anything else. It's as if this never-ending labor has affected her sanity. Work, 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 till the eyes are heavy and dim. This time the woman's eyes are not heavy and red, they're heavy and dim, reflecting on, on the disposition of the woman. Her life is now dim. There doesn't seem to be any light at the end of the tunnel. This may highlight with monotony comes one's decline, whether it be in the form of physical health or mental health. Seam and gusset and band, band and gusset and seam. The woman changes the pattern of the seam, gusset and band. This may show that she has learned one thing and cannot talk about anything else. She also exemplifies the dimness in her eyes through these two lines, emphasizing the only creativity left in her is changing the order of the same words, nothing else. The repetition of the same words may also suggest the monotony in her life. Nothing matters to her as long as she's bound in this world of stitching. Till over the buttons I fall asleep. Since she falls asleep right after the repetition of the same words in a different order, we may assume these things keep running through her mind while she stitches until she falls asleep once again emphasizing upon the monotony of everything. And see you the morn in a dream. This line may point out the woman's skillfulness at this work. Her muscle memory takes over when she is no longer conscious. When she is dreaming, her subconscious takes her to a world she desires, but her body continues to live in this world, perhaps highlighting the divergence between her romantic and realistic selves. When I say romantic, I don't mean she is with a man in her dreams or anything like that. Romance is also related to mystery and excitement that comes along with it. 
O oh, men, with sisters dear, O oh, men, with mothers and wives. The woman uses the expression O, oh, allowing the readers to know something emotional is coming up. She then mentions the sisters, mothers and wives using an emotional appeal in attempt to get her way out. She presumably uses these three relationships to make the men see her with a soft heart and treat her like a loved one. It is not linen you're wearing out, but human creatures' lives. The cloth imagery is associated with laborers once again, as you know there's a pun with wearing, which may imply that by putting fabric on their bodies, men are causing many women to suffer. She identifies all of the working women as human creatures, perhaps attempting to show the listeners the workers are treated like machines or animals. They need to remind the men of their basic human necessities being undermined as they are exploited and not given the fruits they deserve. Stitch, stitch, stitch. This time she pauses while repeating stitch instead of exclaiming. She takes longer and requires more effort to speak, showing how her strength is decreasing. Similarly, she pauses after every word in the line after. In poverty, hunger, and dirt. The repetition of these three may show how these attributes are affecting her way of speaking. She realizes the harsh working environment and the truth of her situation, but she does not say it in a revolutionary cry. She says it with a sigh of acceptance. Sewing at once with a double thread, a shroud as well as a shirt. These two lines are very poetic despite being very simple. The woman uses a double thread as she sews two things at once while she dies alone. She uses the alliteration of SH creating a harsh and haunting sound associating it with the shroud she is sewing highlighting the fact that she is dying because of the production of these clothes. But why do I talk of death? The stanza starts with the rhetorical question, death is the only thing her life is going towards. Hence, the woman shows she has no reason to fear death. She already looks dead, as her appearance reflects her inside. The Phantom of Grisly Bone The woman gives a sinister description of how she imagines death. Do note, death has been personified. She doesn't see it as a concept but as a person. Hence, she is able to relate to it and draw out resemblances between her and death. I hardly fear his terrible shape. This line could be a critique on her own figure when she mentions and repeats, It seems so like my own. Indicating her disdain for herself, she looks so much like a dead person she has no reason to fear death or what the dead look like since she has nothing left to lose. She pauses after both the lines, perhaps this is the first time she realizes she looks like a corpse and that she is already half dead. The repetition of this may reflect she is attempting to process this idea and there may be some truth in it. Because of the fast psyche, oh God, that bread should be so dear and flesh and blood so cheap. She discusses the exploitation of labor, highlighting the fact that the laborer's skills are plundered by the rich and their freedom to live is taken away, reinforcing that inanimate objects cost more than a person's life. Work, work, work. My labor never flags. This line shows the woman has been trained and is treated like a machine. And what are its wages? A bed of straw? A crust of bread? And rags? That shattered roof? This naked floor? A table? A broken chair? Her wages do not atone for her hard work she puts into the production of these shirts. She then, with a number of endowments after each item, makes it known what she affords with the minimum money she receives is only enough for her to survive. She even includes the broken chair to make it certain she puts down every single thing she owns, making the reader pity her position. What could each of these things symbolize? The bed of straw could symbolize the discomfort she faced all her life due to the bare minimum she has to live with. The crust of bread may symbolize her own self. A lot of the times, the crust of breads are thrown away. The inside matters, so she could see herself the same way. She is not considered important while her work is. What do you think the rest of the things could symbolize? Comment below. And a wall so blank, my shadow I thank for sometimes falling there. Dark and depressing imagery is seen through these lines. They show how lonely this woman is. The only company she has is her shadow, 
which itself is symbolic of something dark and obscure, resonating with the concept of death. She mentions the shadow sometimes accompanies her, allowing the readers to deduce her shadows are only there when the light is there. This shadow leaves her when the light leaves her in the month of December, as mentioned later, when everything is cold and dark and she is alone once more. That's it for this video. Check out part 2 for the analysis for the rest of the stanzas and a few more things like the importance of the poem being a song and whatnot. See you there!